afternoon, everyone. Welcome to CCDA's, are we on our third? I think we're on our fourth uh, webinar now. This is wonderful to see some smiling faces. My name is Jeffrey Benson. I'm the president of the California Choral Directors Association, and it's my pleasure to welcome you. And um, I wanna say a quick thank you to Trish Adams, the executive administrator for CMEA, CODA, and CBDA for being our Zoom hostess with the mostess. And uh, we want to welcome Mr. Anthony Arnold from Miller Middle School, who's doing his pentatonic palooza with us today. I'm excited to do some singing, Anthony. We hope you're going to get us dancing, moving, and grooving. Anthony's been at Miller Middle School for the last 18 years, and is just a fantastic human and great teacher. And he's currently on the California Choral Directors Association Board of Directors. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you guys for coming. It's it's weird to talk to a screen um, and not all of you in a room. So um, there there's I still haven't gotten it all down yet. So bear with me um, as we go through this together. So here's my game plan before I share my screen with you. Um, game plan is um, so backstory. I did this presentation. Um, back when we had the Northern and Southern Conference in the fall. And so um, I'm gonna give you backstory and then I'm gonna um, do what I did and then I'm gonna do um, future applications to um, Pentatonic Palooza. So, um, and then um, hopefully in the end I can show you um, how I'm applying that um, to our distance learning as well with our with the students. So that's our, our brief overview. So hang in there, bear with me. I'm sharing my screen with you guys. And here we go. Thumbs up if you guys can see my screen. Good. Okay. So um I entitled this the 2020 CCDA Zoom presentation. Um, once again, I'm Anthony E. Arnold from Miller Middle School, San Jose, California. Um, I wanted to start off with a quote for today. It says, um, strong minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, weak minds discuss people. Um, so hopefully today we're going to discuss really good ideas with you to go forward with your students. Um, so um, here's my um, disclaimer. The ideas presented to you today are part of my own personal journey in education. Feel free to either steal and make them your own or disregard them into the abyss of forgetfulness. Um, so a little bit about myself. This is actually my 25th year of teaching. It's my 18th year at Miller. I was hired in 2002 to build a, a choir program. Um, in 2004, or the second, or going into the third year of the program, I was able to start an audition choir called Advanced Choir, and then I continued with. Um, well, I don't like calling it beginning choir. I call it choir the beginning the beginning to give it emphasis on the choir part and not the beginning part. Um, so um, as I've been building the program, here's just a brief overview of it. Um, so in that first year from 2005 to 2019, both groups have received superior ratings at any festival which participated in the United States. And in 2014, 2015, we got an invitation from ACDA to perform at Salt Lake City. Now, I tell you that as a, a, a background to going forward into um, this pentatonic palooza, because this was the 20th year of my teaching profession and doing a performance like this was nerve wracking. Um, at the same point in time, you see the picture, it was the Mormon Tabernacle. I mean, pin drops acoustic wise, phenomenal. So here's what I decided to do at the end of this phenomenal school year. I decided, hey, let me go back to school. 
So I went back to school after teaching for 20 years and I went to Holy Names University summer program 2015. And here is the big question that as you can see, I'm not lying because the circle there is my face in the background. Thank goodness for my height that I didn't get covered up. But here was the question that I came away with during those three glorious weeks up in the Oakland Hills. And the question was this, how much do you really know? Um, and dear Lord, um, after doing this thing for 20 years up until that point, um, I found out within those three weeks that I knew very, very little. I would say about one-tenth of what I should know. And so there is a, a phrase that or quote from uh, Mr. Zoltan Kadai that was shared with you that said this, the characteristics of a good musician can be summarized as follows. Number one, a well-trained ear. Number two, a well-trained intelligence. Number three, a well-trained heart. And number four, a well-trained hand. All four must develop together in consistent equilibrium. And- Hey, Anthony. That, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, your share screen is frozen on the first slide. Is it possible um, to maybe start the presentation, like the actual slideshow over? So where are you at right now? We see the characteristics of a good musician. There it is. Okay, how about I just leave it right here um, and then not go into presentation and, and we'll see what happens there. Great, Does thank that sound you. Okay, so, um, um, so all four of those things, well-trained ear, well-trained intelligence, a well-trained heart, well-trained hand, um, must work together. But that's only half of the quote from Mr. Kadai, he continues and he says this, as soon as one of those four lags behind or rushes ahead, there is something wrong. So far, most of you have met only the requirement of the fourth point. The training of your fingers has left the rest far behind. You would have achieved the same results more quickly and easily, however, if your training in the other three had kept pace. And so in those three weeks that I was with um, the teachers there, um, it really exposed me to um, even better training of what I had, for lack of a better word, piecemeal together um, educationally and produce really good students but I felt in the three weeks that I was doing the program, I was like, how much more information uh, or can I challenge myself? And therefore, um, in challenging myself, it would better prepare the students um, for future endeavors. So some of you guys educationally know this term very, very well, SMART goals. Um, and specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time frame. And so my SMART goal that I it came away with was a question that said, how do I get my students to improve their music reading without a piano and without me as their teacher? Ultimately, my challenge was, if I were to put them in a room with a sheet of music and give them a time frame, could I come back and without them even playing the piano, could they be able to sing that piece of music as best as they possibly could? So from my three weeks, I started to use a word um, sequencing or sequential. Describes events in order or explains the steps one must follow to do something or make something. So here's what I had to arm myself with. I had to arm myself with um, learning a whole bunch of songs and the songs were very strategic, okay? Here's how those songs were strategic. Um, some of the songs were what we call beat songs. Some of the songs that I had to arm myself with were rhythm songs. 
some of the songs I had to arm myself with were melody or pitch songs. Um, and what I mean by that is if it's a beat song, that song was specifically sung and done with the students that we were going to focus solely on beat. And, and I'll explain more about that in, in a moment. Um, and then the fourth dot down there says, songs centered around the primary keys F, C, and G. Um, and there is a very strategic reason for that. Um, some songs um, that we use um, use the keys of D and E flat. And some songs follow a very specific interval pattern. So with all that, I have to also remember this. In the steps, I had to do a lot of reinforcing. So if I introduced a concept, I had to make sure as I'm introducing another concept to, to reinforce the previous concept so that all of the learning was sequential. And if the student stumbled on one step going forward, I can always go back and reinforce before we proceeded forward. So there was no lapse and I could always track where their learning was. So I, do, I came up with what I call the dimensions. So first dimension, the beat. So day one, students come in and we talk about um, beat. I introduce a song to them um, that I can actually teach you guys really quick. Um, the song goes like this. Engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line. If the train goes off the track, will I get my money back? Yes, no, maybe so. Now, can you guys say that back to me? Is everybody on mute right now? <laughs> okay, so, um, so with that, then I also want to make sure that the students are being reinforced with some type of body um, percussion and some type of movement that reinforces their learning as we go along. Now, with with that first dimension, then I come down to the second dimension. And now I start to incorporate rhythm with them, okay? Um, one rhythm technique that I've fallen in love with is Takadimi. And I really didn't want to focus too much. That's a whole nother long subject in itself. But as you notice, beat is still there. So we're emphasizing the beat as we go along with the rhythm. Now, here is the, the money round right here, okay? Um, so um, I haven't scientifically looked this up per se, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something out loud that I highly believe in um, because in doing this for 25 years, this is what I see in my students um, a lot. When you start to add more than two things to the equation of learning music, one of the things goes haywire. So we could be doing the second dimension and the students are learning the rhythm and they're doing well with keeping the beat. And then as soon as you add that melodic element to it, dear Lord, it's like they forgot the music, they forgot the beat, because they're trying to concentrate so much on the melody. And so what I, I've noticed is this, if it's more than two things that are going on, I have to make sure that one of the prior things, whether it be the rhythm or the beat becomes automatic. Something that they can't think about per se, it's just a part of who they are. Um, it's that concept that I, I tell my students is mastery. We want to always achieve mastery towards these steps so that they become a conscious part of who you are. And if you've studied about mastery, the, the, the common thing about mastery is that it's 10,000 hours. Equivalent to K through 12 education equates to 10,000 hours. So here is our third dimension lesson. And this is going to transition us um, from all the concepts prior 
now into our pentatonic. And this is an actual lesson that I go over with the students. So um, leading up to the point, we say, all right, ladies and gentlemen, an interval is what? And they say the distance between two pitches, okay? And then we talk about the musical staff, five lines and four spaces, called a musical staff. Treble clef is symbol used for high pitches in music, okay? Now, one thing that we use in class a lot is a tuning fork. At this point of when we get to third dimension things is when we start incorporating more of the tuning fork because I, want, I don't want to plug out the pitches for them. I'd like them to actually get that natural um, pitch. Um, I noticed this at Casmic this year, um, one of the groups on Saturday, and got all their pitches from um, the tuning fork and not any other device. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then for my beginners, what we do is we then start, um, and we haven't start, this is reinforcing again. We go back into our steps and our skips, okay? So I know it's gonna list out three pitches here, but our tuning fork is based off of A. Um, and so when we use our tuning fork, I ask the students to go ahead and sing um, on the A to get the A, and then I will point to the G, um, which will go, A, G is a step, G, E is a skip. And this, at this point, this is all review um, because we've just been reinforcing and reinforcing as we go along, okay? Now, we transition that to the musical staff, and now they're gonna sing the pitch names, G, E, um, uh, and then sing the whole pattern forwards and backwards, because it's only one measure long. They continue to do that, and then what we do is we transition from actually seeing it to tactile or feeling it on the finger staff. So five fingers, five lines, four spaces, and we go ahead and we sing the words. And the students already know this song, but now we transition them from what they already know in their head to now seeing it and applying the inner valic relationship to it. So make sure I get the correct pitch. Mm -hmm. Seesaw up and down in the sky and on the ground. I'm also working on diction too, believe it or not. Now we add on to that. So if you notice, melody name wise, we are using the interval so and me. Okay. Now in this next song, Bell Horses, we're going to add law. So that if you remember the previous slide up here. That was law, this is so, and this is me. So they know this song using their finger staff again. Bell horses, bell horses, what time of day? One o'clock, two o'clock, time to away. And then from there, we used, so we went so me, second was la so me, now third, we're gonna incorporate the skips. So, so, me, and now do. So, G, E, C, C, E, G. And they do know this song. Now they're singing the song on the music staff. Peace, porridge, hot. Peace, porridge, cold. Peace, porridge, in the pot. Nine days old. And then it repeats. And they're doing that on their finger staff. And then we do, so once again, number one, so me, two, la so me, three, so me do, four, la so me do, so A, G, E, C. Song for that, apple tree, apple tree, will your apple fall on me? And then we have that nice, at the very end, knocks me out. Um, which is actually where I introduced them to a leap. 
And then we go into mi, re, do. So as our fifth one, using our finger staff, and you can probably guess hot cross buns for that song. Now, if you put it all together, so mi, la, so mi, so mi, do, la, so mi, do, and mi, re, do, um, we now have our pentatonic. Okay, I introduced pentatonic to them as penta meaning five, tonic meaning sound, so five sound scale. Now we're at our presentation that we did um, in the fall. So what we do is we teach them, or I demonstrate for them always, and we do the do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, so, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, so, la, so, mi, re, do. And then we do that backwards. La, la, so, la, la, so, mi, so, la, la, so, mi, re, do, re, mi, so, la. We'll do the whole thing and then we start adding actions. So what this is doing is it's reinforcing um, beat within them because they still have to keep the beat because they're going back and forth right to left on their feet. They're also doing tactile on their hands. Um, but this um, exercise, what it does is it gets them to internalize once again the beat and the pitch and incorporate for me a snap. So, do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, so, re, do, and so forth, going up and then going back down. And then we replace the so with the shoulder tap. Do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, La, re, do, and then backwards. And they, the kids actually love this. And if you're wondering where I got this from, um, I forgot the slide to put it on here. I stole this from a slide on YouTube um, that I'll put on here. It's called Do Pentatonic um, from a school in Australia. Very, very cool. Um, now we replace Ray with a slap on the leg. So, do, 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 so forth, so on. You may think this is easy. It is not for those of you who were there or just try it when you get time, okay? Touching your head is for our law. Um, and this is where the beat really gets um, starts to get really enforced because the less sounds you have, the more they got to internalize the beat. And then finally, we incorporate the stomp of the foot um, for our dough. Okay, so at this point, everything is silent. Okay, and I added this slide. So now here comes the reinforcement. The reinforcement is we go through the pentatonic and we now go, do, re is a step, re, mi is a step, mi, so is a skip, so, la is a step. You can also do this with the pitch names that are here on the left hand side too. The next slide actually has it going down. A, G is a step, G, E is a skip, E, D is a step, D, C is a step, okay? Now, and I for some reason forgot to um, remember to incorporate this next slide. So, um, but what happens is, Forget about the blue part that's on top. One of the key elements that is in level one of Kadai training is if you were to take out this blue strip right here, 
what they're going to ask you to do is you're going to sing all the bottom here on the same pitch. So if our do was C, which it is right now, um, you would sing do re mi so la so mi re do. And then for the next one, I would go still start on on C, but I would sing it as re. Re mi so la do do. <laughs> um, but I would actually go and sing that up to re and then back down and then I would do my me on C. Mi so la do re mi re do and do that and then so as you see I'm a little out of practice because I'm not doing it every day and then all the way back to do okay but it's the same pitch um, on the blue you want to make sure that the students are able to do it going up and going down okay there are variations to this first variation um i don't know if this is but it says sideways okay so when you're going sideways on this you want to make sure that it goes up so do re mi so la do re do la so mi re. So you go up, and then shift over to the right, and then start going down. Shift over again, going up, and then so at this point you're not keeping the same um, do per se, but you are transitioning, still using um the c major scale so the do being c and then you shift over to the the re being the high d okay and then variation number two actually incorporates the round so you can do this unison doing the same thing but then um depending on how many different parts that you have so i have satb and so we usually do this in four parts um, our baritone slash basses start first. Um, and they do re. And then as soon as they get to me is when our tenors would start on the do re. And when they get done, they go all the way across and then everybody holds the do at the very end, okay? So these are just ways to, that you can use um, for intonation for your group um, to still reinforce the ears. And also you can use this to transition from the pitch ladder also to um, the musical staff as well. So they're reading it both by using their hands and also reading the music as well. And it's good to actually change, um, like I said, from your, your C, um, to also incorporating in F and also incorporating in G. Sometimes you can um, even do the D just because of the tessitura of where your, your singers are, okay? Now, something that I've been playing around with after the pentatonic because I also teach band. And so here's, here's the concept behind this. Um, instrumentally, as Kadai said, um, we get this, um, we get the fingers down, um, sort of like Hannon. Um, Hannon devised, um, as we know, exercises because he noticed that the fifth and the fourth finger, um, students, young students were not able to spread them apart. Um, he did his anatomy and realized that there's a tendon that is shared there. So um, he devised exercises that are brutal. Um, but it splits this, these two fingers so that it's easier to play the more challenging um, piano music that's out there. Um, a lot of times instrumentally, um, instrumentalists train by um, the exact opposite. They uh, are singers. They know the exact, when they see something, they know they've memorized to the point of the exact fingering that they need to go to um, for their instrument. I'm a trumpet player um, as well. 
And so they could see it, know the fingering, and play it that way. However, to try to get them to not see it on a piece of paper and to actually get it underneath their fingers is why these are great exercises for instrumentalists. So I devised a way with my singers and my instrumentalists to raise their bar of awareness of their ear training um, and their conscious awareness to where certain intervals are hearing wise, fingering wise, um, and seeing wise, um, which is now being reinforced through our distance learning. So now the first thing after the pentatonic, what we focus on is the arpeggio, okay? As we know, arpeggios being the broken chord. So the first set of arpeggios that we go through are the skip and the leap or the minor third and the perfect fourth. So still, if we're still doing it in C, we have the um, do, and we go from the do to the high do, and then go across again, reinforcing the high do down to the low do, and we hold that for a half note. And then I'll also point out intervallically, at this point, we start switching our, 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 um, our language from steps, skips, and leaps now to what it actually is. So um, from so to our do, we now we knew as a leap and now we go and that's a perfect fourth. Our second one of our arpeggio, we go from do, mi, so, do. So the front part is still the same, but now we're gonna start incorporating our steps or our major seconds. So we have high do to T, T, so, so, fa, Fa to re and then re do. Do mi so do ti so fa so fa re do. And then what we try and do is we do the first part do mi so do so mi and then the second part together. Do, mi, so, do, ti, so, fa, re, do. And then the third part by itself. Now we go. Do, mi, so, do, re, ti, so, fa, re, do. So if you put that all together, what you notice is we are gradually now putting together a diatonic or a major scale. So, do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do, mi, so, do, ti, so, fa, re, do, mi, so, do, re, ti, so, fa, re, do. And so now, from all those skips, we introduce the diatonic. Series of pitches containing five full steps and two half steps. And it's always good to make sure not only to say what I'm speaking from middle school, but I also know in high school this is important because they forget. So a series of pitches containing five whole steps and two half steps. And so now we have that whole pattern. And yes, I try to color coordinate so the students see where the octaves are, where we incorporated our seconds from our arpeggio. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And then from there, um, we incorporate, and this is the brutal one for singers. And this one is going to take a little bit of time, but it's worth taking the time to do this with them, is incorporating the chromatic with them. So all those little half steps um, is good to learn um, for the hand signs as well. Um, so we go through the chromatic and yes, always believe in color coordinating as well. Um, do, di, re, di, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, 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 ti, do. And then back down on the ta, lo, sa, ma, all that, all the way back down to do, okay? So after the chromatic, 
then we go into our tuning. And there's all sorts of, of different ways that you can do the tuning um, with your students, but the one that I try and incorporate with them is having um, the sequence group of sopranos, altos, tenors, and baritones. So we use the diatonic scale going up. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti. So the four um, actually flip this around. So it's actually the sopranos who hold that. So ti, la, and then the altos, and then my tenors, and then the baritones are on re, and then cut off after the fa, and resolve to the far right column, which is the high do, so, mi, and do. Don't be afraid to take this model here and incorporate this with, um, because I know some of you guys um, do your, your jazz choirs as well. Um, so incorporate your major sevens, incorporate your dominant sevens, incorporate your minor, incorporate your suspensions in this. And the more that the students get exposed to actually how they sound with each other in a group, then the easier when they see it in the music and they go, oh, remember when we warmed up to this? And then like, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to sound like. And now they actually see it on the actual piece of music. So that's that reinforcement um, that is always going on. Now, how are we applying this in our actual class? So um, I'm gonna make a shameless um, ad right now. Um, so I received an email during this whole distance learning thing that um, a program that I was using called Note Flight um, actually has um, Note Flight Learn um, that they were opening up free until June the 30th um, for students um, to use this in conjunction with um, Google Classroom. So what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks is both my band students and my choir students, we've been applying, actually writing out the music. So they're learning um, the notation, but the beautiful, the real, real cool thing I like about Note Flight is the factor that the students can actually go in and record themselves singing their part um, with a metronome. Um, so they write it out and then let's say um, here that they have um, their notation on the second line that's right here. Um, then when they're ready to record, they would hit the start and then they would record their pentatonic scale and it would actually capture their sound. And then they're so, not only are they knowing and learning the notation, they're, but they're also being able to sing it in real time and that way I can listen to it and then give them feedback through Google Classroom and actually give them a grade for it as well. Really cool how they did this right now. If you want to play around with it, it's absolutely positively free. Um, just remember Note Flight Learn. Um, all the music that we're um, doing right now um, is put together so that we learn the songs dimensionally. So as you can see here for their warm up, um, for my advanced choir students, they have here for Seasons of Love, um, here they would have their melody names here pentatonically. Um, and then next they would have their arpeggios that we just learned. Um, and they have to do this measure in five, four, because that's just how it works out. And then lastly, they have the diatonic major scale that's here. Um, Anthony, is it possible to um, show us the, the window that you're in? We're still looking at the uh, Zoom presentation. Oh, really? Yeah, we can't oh, see oh. Oh. All right, sorry about that. Let's see here. So share screen. Share. How about now? 
Yay, yes, perfect. Okay, so sorry about that. Thank you for interrupting. Um, so let me go through here and edit so that you guys can see how this works. So with Note Flight Learn, the students would go through and here they know number one, do equals F diatonic. So that's their do. Re, mi, so, la, do, la, so, mi, re, and then do, and then go to duration, change that right there. So what happens now is they've now written it out. Um, the reason why they have the third line there is because we've noticed that when they actually record with their headphones, um, there's nothing playing along with them so they can um, hear the actual pitches as they sing. Um, so we create this third line down here so they hear it in their ear as they're singing to make sure that they're matching the pitch. And then we go over here to record and there should be a line that shows up. We're gonna go down here and put that bigger line in the second um, line out of our three. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna click start. Gives me a countdown. Ready, breathe. Do, re, mi, so, la, do, la, so, mi, re, do. Now, over here on the side, I'm going to stop that because it actually picked up everything. But now what it's doing is creating a wave file. So behind my window here are these faces. A mixer should actually come up. And then now you can see that my actual recording is here. So if I go back here and I push play, you can see how accurate I was. Beautiful. So that's actually recorded on there. We can hear the marimba part, check our, our intonation and our pitch. Um, I could, since this is written in percussion up here, I could turn this off in the recording um, on the mixer on the side over here by just clicking this part off um, and then go to the parts and click that off. So it's really interactive for the students in real time that the students can actually not only get the notation down, but also to um, learn their parts without me actually being there in the classroom to help them out as they go. Um, it's something that I have found very, very effective. And then um, I just give them chunks of the music. Um, we do it a week at a time um, where they um, go through and um, write in their music in the scores um, and do the melody names, reinforce which pitch names, and then they can learn it and then sing it back. The tempo can be slowed down and then I tell them the exact tempo that I would like it to be sung and or if it was a band student play that. So um, that is about our pentatonic palooza um, for today um, that I have and I will field any questions that we have going forward. If you have questions, you have an option of either typing the questions in the chat and I'll read them, or if you would like to actually talk, that's fine too. Um, just under participants on the Zoom call, you, there's a feature that you can raise your hand um, and then that pops up in the chat or in the participants area and then I can unmute you rather easily. So either one of those. Um, Someone asked, Anthony, while we're waiting for more questions, someone asked, if the marimba part is cut and pasted from the vocal part, won't it always match up? Will it always match up? Yeah. Um, so um, before you do the actual recording, you want to make sure that you, um, if I was going to record the second line, 
I would cut and paste and put it in the third line and then make sure um, that, so I don't know if you guys could see on the, on the far right, because I couldn't see it because if I'm sharing my screen, faces show up. But on the far right, there was a mixer. Um, let me go back. So over here in your record, there's a mixer that's over here. And I don't know if, if this thing, oh, there we go. Okay, so if I go over here, I'm gonna click metronome because we always want the metronome. And then here, I'm gonna click that off. And then this is the actual part that I'm recording here. And then the marimba is here. Now, I do tell my students this. Please make sure when you record, record with a set of headphones that are on um, so that you can hear the part in your headphones, but don't put the headphones all the way on because you want to hear yourself live. Um, and then if they do it correctly, if you notice here, um, this part will actually not play. So the top line will not play. I'm recording here and then what's playing in my headphones is the metronome and the marimba part. Now I could change this marimba part if I wanted to, um, to something else. Um, I just like the marimba because the voice ones on here sound synthesized, which they are, and they don't sound very good. And it's really hard to hear. So I actually like an instrument. You could actually change it to piano too, if you wanted to, um, but, I did, for now, I just like the marimba um, for that. So that's why the students cut and paste. And usually 98% of the time it works. There's the 2% glitch, um, but usually 98% of the time it works. Amalia has a question. And Amalia, you're unmuted now. Oh, hi. Um... First of all, great presentation, Anthony. Thank you so much. Um, I actually, thank you. Um, I actually was wondering because I couldn't really see the finger staff that you were showing, and I was wondering uh -huh. if you could model it really quick. And what is that supposed to look like when they're doing the the finger staff? Okay, so let me go back. So when you said finger staff. Which finger staff in particular? Um, I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't really remember specifics, but I, I, you were showing the staff and then you were moving your... Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so, so it was during our third dimension. So, um, so here on, on this, like, can you guys see this okay? Uh-huh. Okay, so here, what the students are doing is they're looking at this on the musical staff and they're just singing, they're not showing me finger staff or anything. They're just singing back to me the intervals. Um, okay. And then that's gonna be reinforced here on the music staff by um, singing the pitch names. And Anthony, I think, I think she also, I think we weren't able to see your hand fully when you demonstrated. Right. Um, so, so now after we, after we do this and the students know that those are G's and E's, then we use our finger staff. Right? Okay. And so what the students do is hopefully, and I got to remind them all the time, they're going to hold up their hand up, not to their face, but up towards their chest so that I can see that they know for sure that G is on the second line and that E is on the first line. So, oh, so think, oh, okay. think of your thumb as line five and think of your pinky as line one. Mm -hmm. And then the space between are the four spaces, one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And so all this is just reinforcing for the students that I can see it, but can I actually touch and know exactly where um, my G and my E R, and um, I, I didn't show you guys, but I would also change these pitches so that it reflects so and me 
in the key of F, and so in me in the key of G as well. Because if, if you put that all together in the pattern that I showed you, it actually already makes a, a diatonic scale um, and, and reinforces um, it even faster for the, for the students. It takes a little bit of time, but um, you, that's why you want them to have a very, very solid foundation in the beginning, because then when my students get into advanced choir, then they're able to recognize the patterns even faster. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Nina, Nina asks, um, do you use all of the hand signs in solfege uh, before you show it on the staff? She thinks it was slide 70, but are you, are you teaching all of the solfege and the hand signs first or simultaneous to staff work? So, if, if I understand the question correctly, um, I'm always going to teach them the, what we call the melody names first, and that's where they get introduced to the hand signs first. And then from there, we transition them to the staff where they learn the finger staff. So they're gonna learn it, learn it here so they can see the intervallic relationship. And then I also reinforce that on the board with the pitch ladder. And then we transition from here to here so they can see it on the finger staff. So um, when we do all the, the intervallic patterns, the so me, the la so me, everything's on the hands first. And then we then we gradually transition them to the actual music. I hope they answered the question. And Anthony, how about um, when when they're learning when they add do, do, do they once we get to below the staff with our fingers, how do we touch do? Do you have them just sort of touch below the hand or? Very good question. So, um, and that's why it's important to do. Um, um, F, the key of F and the key of G, so that you don't run into that problem. Um, but what we do is once they get here to the E, then we touch right underneath the pinky for the D and then right below the pinky for middle. And I actually call it middle C. I just don't call that one C. I actually reinforce it to call it middle C. Um, because A, it's that grand staff, it's the link between the, the bass clef, our lower pitches and our higher pitches. So I give it a special name, middle C. So that way they know um, where middle C is on the finger staff. Anthony, before we go, um, I think we should all, um, even though we'll be on mute, we should all have to practice your pentatonic palooza with the snaps and the, I think we should all do it. <laughs> we'll have a good laugh as we are, many of us are terrible at it. <laughs> all right, so let me, let me um, get the slides up. Because when Anthony, when Anthony did this uh, at Cal State East Bay last fall, we were hysterically good and bad all at once. <laughs> 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 okay, so do, do. All right, here we go. One, ready, breathe. Do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, so, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, so, la, so, mi, re, do. Hold it out to three, not a lot. La, la, so, la, la, so, mi, so, la, <coughs> la, so, mi, re, mi, so, la, la, so, mi, re, do, re, mi, so, la, hold it out, two, three, four, now we get four beats, here we go, and, do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, so, Re, do, do, re, so, la, so, re, do, ready, breathe, here we go. La, la, so, la, 
la, so, so, la, la, so, re, so, la, la, so, re, do, re, so, la. One, ready, breathe, here we go. Do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, la, re, do. Hang in there. La, 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 re, la, la. Re, do, re, la. <coughs> Ready? Here we go. Slap and do, 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 la, do, la, 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 la. La, 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 do, la. Ready, breathe, here we go. Do, 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 do. Go. All right, silence. Ready, breathe, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was fantastic, Anthony. I'm going to have to do some more practicing on that. <laughs> <laughs> we all um, will. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here today. Um, Anthony, we love you, and thank you so much for uh, uh, providing us with some, some fun and interactive uh, learning on Pentatonic Palooza. Um, if you didn't see in the chat, uh, Anthony's session today, the video of it will be up on our web site, uh, calcda.org, including the chat. So that all the links that people were posting, your colleagues were posting all those wonderful links, um, those will be up on the website by the end of the week. And next week's webinar is a TED, a TED Talk style, so we'll have four panelists um, all speaking about several different things, some great panelists and some great discussions. One uh, uh, musician and psychotherapist gonna talk about our mental health during this time of, of crisis and how we as teachers sort of stay um, stable and, and taking care of ourselves um, mentally. So some really great short 12 minute talks next week um, for the hour. So thank you all so much for being here. And uh, again, look for this up on our website by the end of the week. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.